In this lesson, we'll see how neural networks actually compute. So in technical terms, we'll describe the forward pass in a neural network. Let's start by reminding the basic structure of a neural network. Actually, there is a video on that, but we can start, start by a short reminder. So let's start with a very simplified view. You have an image where there is a man and a bike. From the neural network point of view, this image is simply a grid. Of course, this is not the, the real view. The grid would be uh, much more granular, uh, and you would have as much squares, as much um, points here, as there are pixels in your camera. So, so one megapixel, this means that you'd have one million points in your grid. And so in this grid, each point has a value, which is the color of this pixel. So, so a pixel will look like this. So this will be a blue pixel. Another one would look like this, which would be a, a, green, a, a red pixel. A pixel can be green. And of course, a pixel can be any other color, which can be a combination of the three previous colors. But to simplify and go in a higher level of abstraction, you can just say that a pixel has a value, a number. Can be in like for example a number in the grayscale or the coordinates of the pixel in red, uh, blue, and green uh, uh, color systems. But you, you, let's say that a pixel is each square of this uh, each square of this grid is a, is a value is a number. Once we understand this abstraction, we can simplify our scheme and say that this image actually a list of values. So this would be our input. We can say that this is the first value, second, third, third etc. And then you start over here. So you are listing all the grids in this fashion. What we want in the output is a set of answers, which could also be a list of values. Say that this one tells you how likely a bike is present in the, in the image. So this, this would tell you, so for example, if this, if this output is 0.9, it means that it's very likely, so it's 90% 90, 90 chances that there is a bike in the, in the picture. And then, so this is, of course, this is oversimplified. So you can have, for example, a bike, uh, women, man, etc. And if you go back to the example of Facebook tagging system, this can be, for example, the lists of Facebook users. So, for example, the first node would tell you Morgan Freeman. The second node, you tell you, uh, uh, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, and then you'd have 2.2 billion possible answers. So we want to map those inputs to some useful outputs telling us what is there in an image and we will we'll do it in a hierarchical form so we'll have a set of nodes called neurons organized in layers to which those inputs will be broadcast so those neurons are organ organized in layers that can be as what we call feed forward in the, in the sense that the signal only goes this way there is no loop between a neuron on the output side and the neuron in the input side, but of course we can have other topologies. So here we'll focus on the feed-forward structure. So neurons would process the values they receive and then broadcast a value to the neurons on their output side. Of course, this is a very simplified view of the of the way the the optical cortex works, because in this case neurons don't have values; they don't send values; they either spike or not. And the useful, from the information theoretic point of view, the useful value of a neuron is the rate with which it is spiking. So let's, let's stick to the artificial neurons point of view, which is that neurons have values, so they, they receive something, they produce a value after, the, after the, they have processed what they received, and then they broadcast this value to the, to the next layer. So, so we have a, a series of broadcasts until we reach the output, where a uh, final layer will say, oh, here I see 90% chance that the photo contains Bruce. And then this neuron says that I see 5% chance that this photo contains Alice, etc. So this is the schematic view. Now, the exact computation is as follows. To just to provide simple formulas to start with, I will start with, so I will describe a very simple neural network where you have a set of inputs, x1, x2, x3. Then you'd have a hidden layer containing five neurons, y1, y2, y3, until y5. And at the end, we have two output neurons, o1 and o2. So each value sent by an input 
So for example, x1 will send its value, so the, the value of the pixel corresponding to x1, and then y1, the neuron one, will give a weight. Weight 1, 1 means this is how much of importance this neuron gives to this input. And then this would be the importance neuron 2 gives to pixel 1, the importance neuron 3 gives to pixel 1, etc. And then w5, 1. The same would happen to pixel 2 and to pixel 3. And then the output nodes would also weight those neurons. So in a very simplified view, so this would be the weight from neuron 2 to output 1, and just to avoid confusion, we would put a, an index 1 here to say that this is the weights go into the first layer and then an index 2 here go, saying that we are talking about the second layer. So w12, w11 superscript 2, etc. w13 superscript 2. So in a very simplified view, let's say that w2 is the skirt and that output 1 tells us whether the photo is a photo of Arnold Schwarzenegger, while neuron 2, while output 2 gives us the likelihood that the photo is a photo of Marie Curie. So this t means that W12, superscript 2, is very likely way lower than W22, because the Marie Curie neuron would likely say that this photo is of Marie Curie because if there is a skirt, because a skirt means a lady, and Marie Curie is a lady, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a guy. It's very, it's very unlikely that Arnold Schwarzenegger wears a skirt. So this was about weighting. So the importance of weighting is to say that from a point of view of a neuron, not all the neurons on my left have equal importance. Some neurons would be important in my decision to say that this is a man or a woman. Some neurons I'll just ignore and I will give them a very low weight. Now, what do, what do neurons do with, 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 the, with the values they receive, they receive and the weights they, they put on those values? Is that, so each neuron Wi among those five here is actually applying an activation function to the weighted sum it is receiving from the inputs. So if this is neuron i, all the synapses, so-called synapses, go into neuron i will start with i, so this convention, in this convention i means the post-synapsic neuron, the neuron that comes after the synapse, so this is the post-synaptic neuron, while j is the pre-synaptic neuron, and so the pre-synaptic neuron is sending this value xj, the post-synaptic neuron is weighting it with wij, puts it inside a weighted sum, running through all the inputs, so from 1 to 3 here, and then applying an activation function. What is the activation function? So remember the simplified view that neuron Y2 is the skirt neuron. Let's say that Y2, when being excited by the presynaptic neuron, so when receiving values from its left side, is not reacting until it reaches a threshold, after which you say, oh, there is a skirt, and here there is no skirt. This is a simple yet very useful abstraction, and we can do it either in a discontinuous way like this, but we would prefer, and we'll see this later, differentiable modeling. So for example, we can say that neuron Y2 has, a, has an S-curve that models this yes and no behavior. Below this value, it's very likely that the neuron will say no skirt, and above it, it starts to reach high probability, so it's, it's, it starts to, to say that there is actually a skirt in what I receive. There are, very, there, are, there are a lot of functions that model this behavior. One of them is the sigmoid function, which is phi of x equals 1 over 1 plus exponential minus x. You can have also hyperbolic tangent that goes from minus 1 to 1, and here you would have so hyperbolic tangent of x. And of course, you can come up with other activation functions. A popular choice is the so-called ReLU function, which is a rectified linear function. Below, below a threshold, you say 0, and above, you just say alpha of x. So alpha can be, for example, 4, a linear function of x. You have also 
activations function like this where you have a first slope enter the threshold and then you increase the slope or you decrease the slope um, you can you can also use quadratic or exponential or whatever so uh, you can have also yeah the rectified exponential where you have you say zero until the until the value where you say exponential this might be important in practice but to understand the concept you can just say that the neuron has an activation function that models some threshold behavior so with this in mind what actually our what 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 our simple and small neural network does is actually producing two outputs o1 and o2 yeah the output neurons can apply uh, an activation function or cannot so let's say that the act the output uh, neurons are linear they don't they don't do this sigmoid or this nonlinear activation function so they just receive a weighted sum so they receive weights so one would receives weight would receive weights with superscript two because it's the second layer for the synapses so it's just receiving a weighted sum of values produced by neurons j's j j going from one to five o2 will receive a weighted sum uh, of the same kind and then each yj is itself the activation function applied to the weighted sum received by the neuron from all the inputs so if we want to detail a one a one would be a weighted sum weighted by the synapses to the output layer of activation functions applied to weighted sums coming from the coming from the input and this abstraction can be recursively called to model much deeper networks. So for example, if you have n neurons, so in the general case, if you have n neurons in the input, then, so sub superscript one means first layer, you would have y on y1 until y n1, n1 means the number of neurons of layer one, so this would be the width of layer one, then you would have neurons of layer two, where the width it goes until neuron n two, and then neurons of layer small l with width n l, those would be called in hidden layers. So those are actually the layers doing the work, doing the job of the neural network, right before the output layer. So at the end, you'd have superscript big L, which means that big L is the total number of, the, this is the depth of the neural network. We have W1 superscript big L, capital L, until WN capital L superscript capital L, and at the end you would have the output, which of course can be a set of values O1 until O something. So if you have a neuron, so neuron J and neuron I here, and maybe a pixel XK here. So input XK is linked to neuron J with weight JK superscript one. Neuron I is linked to neuron J with weight WIJ superscript two. Something going to layer L would be superscript small l, and then at the end, superscript B, capital L plus one go into the output. So for example here, if it's linking the neuron number one and the output number two, it would be two, one. So yeah, at the end, the output would be a weighted sum, superscript capital L plus one, so if this is output, let's say uh, i, yeah. If the output, if the output is itself a set of values, so o1, o2, etc. And so if if we are talking about the output index i, so this output, for example, it will be receiving a weighted sum, superscripted by the depth plus one, indexed by the index of this output and the index of the incoming neurons, so those would be the neurons indexed by J, from the last layer, capital L, which themselves is the activation function 
applied to a weighted sum. So those weighted sums are going to the neuron index J, it would be run through indexes K, and K would be the neuron of layer L minus one, which in turn is the activation function of some K prime, W K K prime, neurons K prime of layer L minus two, etc. recursively until we reach the weighted sum on the input, which looks like the simple single layer, single hidden layer uh, network we, pre we presented before. And of course, the output node can be just a linear weighted sum. It can be also a weighted sum to which we can apply an activation function. So this is, this is the way we compute the forward pass. And of course, the interesting thing, the interesting, the interesting thing in the neural network, so what, what makes it work, is the good set of values WIJ, so, so the, a good set of synaptic values. So learning is actually about setting the weights or trying to find the best set of weights. And since machine learning is about avoiding to program, so av avoiding as much as possible manual programming, we will not have a set of experts in image recognition telling us, yeah, that yeah, the neuron that recognizes a skirt should be weighted with point, uh, point 0.5 or 3.2 to correspond to a, an image of that, and then the neuron of the hat should be uh, given a weight of 5.7 to model uh, whatever uh, personality that wears hats. We can't, we can't do that manually. So learning is about finding an automated way to set those synaptic weights, so to set those coefficients that neurons give to each other. So each neuron gives an importance to an, another, another neuron. And, and we want to do this in, a, in an automated fashion, given examples. So what we will see in another video is how, so this is, so this is the forward pass, so this is how a neural network processes the input through a series of weighted sums and activation functions applied to those weighted sums until reaching the output. What we would see in our video is how to learn that, how to set an algorithm that will automatically adjust the values of the weights to find the best prediction we want at the output level.